Good morning, welcome to our uh, service of uh, worship this morning, which includes uh, a time of um, Holy Communion together. And wherever you're uh, joining us from this morning, whether it be part of the benefice here in Lindhurst or Emery Down or Minstead or further afield, welcome to um, our friends uh, Wayne and others um, in Vancouver, in Canada, and uh, I believe there are those with us also from uh, Canada, uh, from California as well this morning. So. Uh, welcome, and if others are listening um, uh, anywhere around this country of ours or around the world, you're more than welcome. And the service that you uh, that we'll be following this morning is one that you should have um, received by email, um, and uh, you're either watching it on uh, screen or you printed it off. Uh, that's that's great. Um, and the newsletter you should have received. Um, thank you, Kate and Suzanne, for looking after that um, this week. 
Um, great piece in the newsletter, um, uh, Spotlight on Syrah, and that's going to be a, a kind of a weekly inclusion now. Uh, uh, so lots in there. Remind you also about our prayer phone today. Um, if you would like us to pray for you, um, then we do have a prayer phone and we encourage you to send your um, texted prayers only, please. Send a text to the number as it is in the news, newsletter 07591 958856. Sorry, 07591 958856. And I remind you that it works very simply and that you send us a, um, a prayer as a text and whoever has the prayer phone um, on that particular moment when they receive your prayer, they will pray that prayer um, with you, uh, for you, and then it will be deleted. Um, and so um, it's kept confidential uh, in that way. But please use that uh, ministry. I'm sure it will be um, an encouragement uh, to many. Um, for those folk that are unable to um, receive our services, of course, you won't be watching now, but do let them know that um, the full text of um, the sermons that are preached during uh, this lockdown um, are also printed in the newsletter. So it's very important that you get the um, Together news. Um, we're just preparing the ninth, and that's incredible. That's, that's nine weeks, really, we've been um, not meeting together. When you think of it like that, um, it's, a, it's a long time, isn't it? Well, there you are. Um, and also, you might be interested to know that some conversations are taking place between the um, House of Bishops and the government about how and when um, we can open our churches again. And it seems, uh, from a letter I received from the House of Bishops this week, that that's going to be left uh, to each diocese to define. Um, and so be prayerful about that as we move, move forward, that um, the bishop and his staff... Um, might be given clarity as to what that will look like for us here in the Diocese of Winchester. So welcome to our service this morning. Um, we would normally, during our worship, um, take up an offering. And uh, there we are. Um, it's great, actually. Every Sunday morning, I'm going to start worshiping, worshiping from home regularly. Every Sunday morning, um, there's a note on the table here. And that's a £10 note, in case you haven't seen one for a while. Um, uh, but there you are. Um, please um, make your offerings to um, the work of the benefice um, through the um, using the directions that are given um, in the newsletter. But you can give um, using your mobile phone, um, using your computer, um, and if you need to, um, then you can also um, give a cash offering. Um, but talk to your treasurers um, about ways that you uh, can give if you're not sure. This evening, uh, we had planned at uh, St. Uh, Michael's for a, um, a service of commemoration uh, for the 75th um, anniversary of VE Day. And it was going to be a, a wonderful uh, celebration. Um, uh, Bishop Debbie was preaching and we had um, four choirs joining, um, joining us to lead us um, in a choral even song. Um, we're going to shift that forward and we'll probably do it nearer um, uh, Remembrance Sunday this year. So that fantastic celebration hasn't been lost, it's just been um, postponed. But we meet to get today at a weekend when we are in lockdown, but also commemorating the um, 75th anniversary of VE Day. The hymns that we use this morning are in your newsletter. Um, and uh, they're all there for you. And so as we prepare to worship, as we bring ourselves um, into God's presence, um, we're going to sing, um, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus.
Our readings today um, focus really on what it is to be comforted. Where do we find our comfort? And as Christians, it's a, um, I trust, a comfort to have faith this morning. But there are many who lack faith and therefore perhaps lack the comfort that they seek. Our reading from the Gospel of John this morning takes us straight into the upper room where Jesus offers comfort to his troubled disciples. And in our reading from the New Testament from the book of Acts, we read of Stephen stoning. And how as he lifts his eyes and sees Christ at the right hand of the Father, so his own comfort is satisfied. And he prays for the comfort of those who persecute him. During this continued time of coronavirus and lockdown and all that's happening around us, I trust that you will be encouraged in our time today to reflect upon the reason for your comfort. And the comfort is not just something that you seek, but something which you know and find in Christ. Welcome in the name of Christ, God's grace, mercy and peace be with you all. And also with you. We sing our first hymn this morning, which is crown him with many crowns.
Crown him the Son of God before the worlds began. And ye who tread where man hath trod, where he hath trod, crown him the Son of Man. Then these words, which are so pertinent to our readings today. Who every grief <laughs> hath known, that wrings the human breast, and takes and bears them for his own, that all in him may rest. So we worship with Christians near and far, living, departed, old and young, those who are well, those who are sick. God's word is for all of us. May, May it be a lamp to our, our feet and a light to our path. So we have God's word and we have a light before us. And so we pray, Lord, speak to us, that, that we may hear your word. Move among us, that, that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers, that, that we may learn to trust you. Amen. Now I'll call it for this morning. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles with you, our New Testament reading this morning is from the book of Acts. And it's chapter 7, Acts chapter 7 and verse 54. When the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at Stephen. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep, and Saul was there giving approval to his death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We sing our gradual hymn, Christ Triumphant, Ever Reigning.
in the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him, and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. This 14th chapter of John's Gospel is um, the focus now of um, our hearts. Lord, may I speak in the name of him who only is God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is such a wonderful passage, a familiar passage too. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. But it's especially comforting for the simple reason that these disciples needed comforting at this time. There in the upper room, remember, um, there they were to receive some well, some pretty bad news, really. Jesus had already told them, I'm leaving you, and where I'm going, you can't come. He said that they would soon desert him, and that one of them would betray him. Uh, Peter had also heard that he, Peter, would deny three times of even knowing him. And Jesus speaks to them, knowing that he'd already delivered them some significant body blows. He says that any discouragement you may be feeling at this precise moment will be multiplied as the events of this night and the following day unfolds, starting with an intense prayer meeting in Gethsemane, and then his betrayal and arrest with the support of one of their own for just 30 pieces of silver. Then they witnessed the trial and the injustice, the denial of Pilate to save him, the mocking of the crowds and the beating of the hands of the Roman soldiers, followed by his death and crucifixion. So knowing how they were feeling now and how they were going to feel when they were without him for three days and three nights, he says to them here in verse 1 of, John, of John's Gospel, chapter 14, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Which on the face of it, given the context, sounds just like one of those phrases we can sometimes use as Christians to impart comfort one to another when clearly we have no idea of the pain and distress they're enduring. Some of you may be familiar with what the Apostle writes in Romans 8 and verse 28. It's a verse that's often used um, as an attempt by Christians to encourage those who are going through some difficulty, who face some trouble of one sort or another. We know that all things, writes the Apostle Paul, work for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. It's a great verse, and rightly a verse to encourage us when properly understood alongside the rest of Scripture and all that God says in his word about his comfort, his grace, his presence and purpose for us, his people. But dev devastatingly insensitive when it's just thrown into the conversation with a slap on the back and a very clear implication that, well, if you were a better or a more mature or faithful Christian, your heart would not be troubled. And therefore, any distress that you're feeling is down to you. We know that all things work for the good. And when we say that to some people, sometimes we leave them with the impression of feeling, well, you don't think that I do. 
And rather than leaving them feeling comforted, we leave them and sometimes are left ourselves. As though we are feeling guilty of a crime against God. And our agony only increases and we can see no comfort coming our way anytime soon. But clearly this is not what Jesus is doing or even meaning here. This is not a friendly slap across the shoulders, it'll be all right. This is not what Jesus is doing when he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He's pointing them straight to the heart of their own spiritual experience and making a comforting connection between the disciples' belief in God and in himself. As we continue through this COVID-19 scenario, and some clearly are fearful about what the Prime Minister will say to the nation at seven o'clock tonight, afraid that he'll relax lockdown too soon, or afraid that he won't. We all feel a measure of anxiety. We're all understandably troubled and looking for some comfort which is why I'm pleased that this is our reading for today. So let's just unpack it for a moment. If you say, this is the first thing, that you believe in God, but your belief in God is of no comfort to you or help to you during this current crisis, then I'm not sure what you think believing in God involves. What did Jesus have in mind when he said, You believe in God, believe also in me. He's drawing them into a place of comfort and reassurance. His disciples were distressed in that upper room. And we may be distressed wherever we're located this morning. But what about this believing in God? You and I believe in many things. At a most basic level, we believe that certain things exist. We believe, I hope, in our own existence and that of our family and friends. We believe that the world exists in all its beauty and complexity. We believe in geography, the places are located, where they are. We believe that the weather's going to be better tomorrow. We believe so many things. There are even those who, like me, (laughs) believe that when the light on the dashboard is flashing, indicating that the fuel tank is empty, and that as the car's warning systems are screeching at me to stop and find some fuel, I believe that any suggestion from Anne that I find the garage is a matter of urgency is an overreaction, and that there's always just enough in the tank, despite evidence to the contrary, to get me to the garage where fuel is 1.1p of a penny cheap deeper than the three garages that Anne has pointed out that we've just driven past. We believe so many things. But you know there are some beliefs, no matter how well founded or strongly held, will prove to be of no comfort to us when it's comfort that we need the most. And comforting was just what the disciples needed in that other room. And I'm sure that comfort is what we need in whatever rooms we're locked down in at this present time. You see, when Jesus says to his disciples, you believe in God, believe also in me, the word that he uses is rightly translated as trust. Jesus says, you trust in God, trust also in me. More accurately, Jesus is saying, friends, you have entrusted yourself to God. Now entrust yourself to me. And you know that to entrust yourself To God is not a passive or notional belief in something that is frankly without consequence or relevance to our troubled lives. Entrusting yourself to God, entrusting yourself to Christ, is the route to comfort. It is where we will find our greatest and most enduring comfort. To trust is to invest all your hope in another who will not disappoint. And here is Jesus saying to his precious yet perplexed friends, not there may be trouble ahead, but the trouble is coming. And the only comfort for you when it comes is that you put your trust in me as you have put your trust in God. It's like Jesus says, I'm telling you something, some difficult things. 
And yet I'm pointing further to distressing events. I'm reminding you again that you're about to experience confusion like never before. You're about to experience dark likes of which you've never experienced before. Anger, pain and grief like you've never known before. And not only grief over my death, but some of you in this room will die too. And frankly, he says, a casual, notional belief in God that says, yeah, I believe in God who doesn't, will not give you the comfort you seek. Will not give you a comfort that's sufficient to sustain you, strengthen you, and even save you. Interestingly, in our lectionary, we have the reading from the Acts of the Apostles uh, in the same set of readings for today. And on the face of it, you might think, how are they connected? Well, I think they are. There in Acts chapter 7, we find ourselves witnessing the murder of Stephen. Not only after his appointment as deacon, but as he becomes um, a, a mouthpiece, as he speaks confidently the gospel, he's given a boldness to go straight before the Jewish council and present the case for the resurrection of Christ. His insistence in preaching that God had raised Jesus from the dead resulted in him, remember, being dragged out of the city by the leaders of the Jewish temple who were gnashing their teeth, such was their anger at him. They were so overcome by their anger that they stoned him by their own hands. But then we read this, Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Echoes there, God and Jesus, you believe in God, believe also in me. You trust God, trust also in me. And here is Stephen at the moment of his death, looking up into heaven, seeing the very God that he's trusted, seeing Christ at the right hand of his Father, whom he has trusted. And then these great words of comfort to him in his own moment of death. Look, he said. I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And as the rocks rain down upon him, there in verse 59, Stephen prays, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. But he's not finished yet. What I think is so powerful and helpfully so is what we read in verse 60. He fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, he fell asleep. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, he fell asleep. As I read this, it seemed clear that Stephen trusted in God and in Jesus, and such this was his comfort, that at the moment of his greatest agony and distress, he thinks not of his own comfort. He has seen God, he has seen Jesus, the God in whom he trusted, the Christ in whom he trusted. He needed no greater comfort, but those who were throwing rocks upon him, they were the ones that needed to find comfort. They were the ones who needed to find the solace and the truth that comes from believing that Christ had been raised from the dead as Lord and Saviour. Such, it seems to me then, is the reality of his strength and his comfort in the moment of his own death that even in his all too apparent discomfort, he can only think of the comfort of others, even those who were murdering him. Isn't that astonishing? Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Lord, he's saying, I think, comfort them. Comfort them with the assurance that Jesus did die, that he did raise, he was raised from the dead and he's now ascended into heaven to the right hand of the Father, just as I have seen him, may they see him too. May they not just believe, but trust. May they trust in God and in Christ. So whilst not in the upper room, when Jesus confronts his disciples, Stephen looks up to heaven and sees now the ascended Jesus at the right hand of God and entrusting himself to God and to Christ, he receives, as I say, the greatest possible comfort that you and I can ever know when we entrust ourselves into the purpose and power of Christ. This was a comfort that not only made the disciples and members of the early church fearless, but also selfless 
in seeking the comfort of others. And it's all about the comfort, not from our belief that Jesus lived on planet Earth 2,000 years ago, but a comfort that comes from our trust in him, that he will not abandon us in our trouble, in life or in death. That is even now preparing a place for all who trust in God and in him, who invested every hope in his victory over sin and death for him, and believe that we may, yes, face disappointment, danger and even death. But as with Stephen, we lift up our eyes to heaven and see Christ standing at the right hand of his Father. Our comfort is not only that Jesus arrives safely home, but that he is preparing an eternal home where one day he will receive us. Now just a bit of a teaser for you, in case you're interested, let me tell you where you can see this comfort in, in action. You'll spot the person whose heart is not troubled when you hear them like Stephen speaking fearlessly about Jesus with everything to gain. And witness again with Stephen, someone serving self selflessly with nothing to lose. And I think in this time of coronavirus, is it not true that we are seeing people who are comforted, comforted in their own faith, and sharing their faith, that which has been a comfort to them as a comfort to others. But not just speaking fearlessly, but serving selflessly. And today again, we thank God for all who are serving selflessly in our own community, in our nation, and across the world. All who are troubled as a result of this current pandemic. then may we know this comfort for ourselves. A comfort, and comfort others rather, with the comfort that we ourselves have received from God. And may Jesus' comfort to our own troubled hearts this day give to us the comfort that we may fear or face. May God comfort us in whatever we fear and whatever we face. And may his word itself today be an encouragement to our own hearts. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the very first words of our creed, the Apostles' Creed, um, we believe in one God, Father Almighty. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. And um, when we say we believe, let's in our minds, in our hearts, acknowledge not just that we believe, but that we trust, and that in that trust we are comforted. And so we say the words of the Apostles' Creed together this morning. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. The we believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. As we come to say sorry to God, perhaps on our hearts this morning, 
we need to confess that we have sought comfort in those things which have not given us the comfort that we seek. Perhaps we need to confess that we have believed that comfort can be found apart from knowing Christ. Our story is a story of forgiveness. And so let us then confess our sins to Almighty God. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have failed you, as did your first disciples. We ask for your mercy and your help. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins, restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, who has heard, heard the voice of our prayer. prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. And, and in our, our soul, soul we will praise, praise our God. God. God says, I forgive you. May this be part of your story today. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. 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 Now before we come to our uh, intercessions this morning, we're going to listen to, the words are in your hymn, you can sing along if you like, um, but um, for our reflection, let's listen to this well-known hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus. Thank you. 
of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. As we gather to pray in his presence, may we be mindful of all his many gifts and his enduring love for all people. During this difficult time, we pray for all affected by the coronavirus and those who nurse, comfort them, and care for them. Thank you, God, for the comfort you provide. May we be ready to avail ourselves of it whenever we feel the need. As we rejoice in the celebrations of VE Day, we remember all those who did not survive their military service, and those who mourn them. Glory to you, O Lord. You have triumphed over the powers of darkness and brought us to share in the inheritance of your saints in light. Raise us up to newness of life, that we may live to serve you, risen Lord, mm. who with the Father and the life-giving Spirit are one God, world without end. Amen. Mm. Father, we give you thanks for the Church, for its teaching and fellowship, for the breaking of the bread together, We pray that we may always come before you with reverence and awe. When you hear me say, Good Shepherd, your reply will be, Guide us and lead us. We give you thanks for faithful stewardship, for all who care and share. May your church use its possessions aright to the relief of the needy and to your praise and glory. Give us glad and generous hearts. Let us seek out and rescue the lost and the straying, protect the young and uplift any who have fallen. Good Shepherd, guide, guide us, us and lead us. us. We pray for all who walk in darkness and in the valley of the shadow of death. We remember all who are caught up in strife and warfare, all areas of poverty, all areas of decadence and evil, all places where we have spoiled the environment we pray that we may find ways to lead to, that lead to joy and life in all its fullness. Good Shepherd, guide, guide us, us and lead us. us. Lord, as you have opened for us the gate of everlasting life, help us to live life to the full. May we help others to extend their lives and their vision. Bless our homes and our loved ones with the fullness of life. Make us useful members of the communities to which we belong. Good Shepherd, 
guide us, us and lead us. us. We remember before you all whose lives are restricted. We pray for the handicapped, the deaf, the dumb and the blind. For all those whose lives are impaired through the cruelty or neglect of others. We pray for all who are in sickness. We pray that we may help where we can. Good Shepherd, guide, guide us and lead us. us. Lord, you open the gate of glory that we may see the joy before us. We give thanks for all who have triumphed over their limitations and now have life in all its fullness. And we especially pray for all those who have had great influences in our lives, sharing their knowledge of you with us and helping us understand the comfort that you can give. Good Shepherd, guide, guide us, us and lead us. us. Lord of the Church, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, then so together we pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our story is a story of comfort. A story of peace. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ and peace with one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. As we share our story, we share God's peace with a mixture of sadness for we are not with you to share peace with you as we would normally do but joyfulness nevertheless, that we know you are there and we long to be together again. And one day we will be. And so, as we often do, let's say the words and share the words of the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. We sing together our next hymn. How deep the Father's love for us. You'll find the words for the hymn on our, in our newsletter.
As we come to the, the table of the Lord, to the Lord's table, again we find ourselves celebrating something that is so precious to us and yet separated from one another. And so there are four of us here this morning, but there are five, five wafers on the pattern. And as I have been doing, um, once we have shared communion, I'll take the fifth wafer as ours together with you. And I pray that even though you are unable to receive physically the bread and the wine, yet what you see is we bear witness to the death and resurrection of Christ, that just seeing us will be a comfort to you as your faith is renewed, as your hope is strengthened in this simplest yet most profound of meals. And so as we continue in the presence of God, as it were, as we look up with Stephen and we see God the Father and God the Son at his right hand, we are comforted in that finished work of Christ. And that even though we were never to share this bread and this wine together again here, the truth is that one day Jesus said we will eat it anew with him in his Father's kingdom. The Lord is here. His, his spirit, spirit is, is with, with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give thanks, thanks and praise. And praise. It is indeed right, our duty and joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father, and on this day of our redemption, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored us to the image of your glory. He has placed us once more 
in paradise and open to us the gates of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and word of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This, this is, is our story. This is, is our song. Serving, serving the Saviour all the day long. The crowds came out to see your son. Yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. <coughs> this, this is, is our story. story. This, this is, is our song. Praising, praising the Saviour all, all the day long. long. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you all. And then Jesus gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This, this is our story. This, this is our song. Praising, praising the Saviour all the day long. And therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This, this is, is our story. story. This, this is, is our song. song. Praising the Saviour all the day long. And so, Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms. Comfort us in your presence. And bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, are we are many, we are, we are one body. Because, because we, we all share, share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is holy. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
you will find rest for your souls. redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of a cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the comfort and joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And together we pray, Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your Spirit, keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. We sing our concluding hymn, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy.
Thank you for worshipping with us today. Thank you for being a comfort to us, as I trust we will continue to be to each other. A comfort that comes not from just believing that God is, but in trusting what he has done in sending Christ into the world. As we leave this place of worship, as we anticipate all that is ahead, may we be found often looking up with Stephen and in faith seeing the one in whom we trust. Jesus said, you trust in God. Trust also in me. We look forward to sharing worship with you again um, this evening if you're able and at other times during this uh, coming week. And I remind you that we have a, um, a Zoom Imagine meeting. Um, very interesting. Last week we had some uh, great ideas as to how we might continue to worship and to witness and serve God um, once we come out of lockdown and we're able to work together. What have we learnt from this season of being yeah, um, a disparate, if not a desperate church? Um, we have much to learn and they're the things that we talk about during this um, meeting on a Tuesday at 10.30. That's Tuesday at 10.30 Zoom meeting. Information is how you can access that meeting um, are in, uh, in the newsletter. And then on uh, Thursday at 9.30, um, we have a Zoom uh, prayer meeting, still prayer meeting. Join us um, if you are able. Well, let's close with um, a word um, of blessing. What it is then to know Christ, whom to know is life eternal. What it is to have known him a bit better today. What it's been to worship him, to hear his word, and to share in this simple meal. What it's been to us has been a comfort. And I'm sure what it's been to God the Father has been a comfort as he has seen those for whom Christ died, putting their trust again in him and celebrating all that he has accomplished in the will of his Father. And so now may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be a comfort to us all in our hearts and in our homes, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us continue in peace, loving and serving the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
great sound, isn't it? Great sound. Yeah. Fantastic. Bye.